Hey guys, Fides. Today we're going to talk about bloating, what's happening in your body, and then I give you three hacks how you can stop bloating, and it doesn't take forever to get there. Guys, I'm doing this video for all of you who wrote back to me after doing the quiz on my website, what you want to improve, the number one thing you want to improve, and so many of you said bloating. The great thing about bloating is that in comparison to other things like cleansing your liver, stuff like that, bloating is actually something that you can find relief pretty, pretty quickly. And that's why I'm doing this video. Something that really shocked me about myself is I was at my mother's place looking through old photos and I saw a picture of myself, you know, this blonde, young, wild person. I, was, I think I was around nine and I was playing at the beach. Uh, it was in the south of France, carrying around a long seaweed, chasing my mother with the seaweed. And my father always made photos and was filming everything. So apart from this funny scene that was maybe just funny for me, not for her, because she was scared of the seaweed and stuff, I saw I was so bloated, you know? And as a kid, I had no idea. I thought just this is normal. But now looking back, I actually remember I had this pressure, this constant pressure and feeling like, mm. I was not really digesting food well, but I didn't have a diagnose for it. That just as a little side note. Now guys, let's jump into, I'd love you to understand first what happens inside your body so you understand the steps that I'm then recommending, which are really easy to do, they are not complicated, and they're gonna be free of them. So first of all, why are you bloating in the first place? What's happening there in your body? It can be two things, and it's likely, two things, <laughs> and it's likely gonna be a combination of both of them. The foods you eat, they are actually not well digested. It can be you don't chew well, and then you don't have enough stomach acid, your bile production is low, then you don't, maybe don't have enough enzymes, your gut bacteria is out of balance and all these things that come together leading to that food is actually is rotting in your gut and sometimes even in your stomach, it just lies there and nothing happens with it, which then produces a gas that is called ammonia, which is highly toxic for the body. When this gas is excreted, it can actually penetrate the whole body, but it also creates inflammation in the whole digestive tract. This is why this tension is there. Yeah. The stomach is really hard, almost like they have a six pack, which unfortunately is not the case. So this gas and malabsorption that you can't break down the foods is one thing. The second thing is bacteria and patho other pathogens like parasites or viruses overgrowing in your intestinal lining and in your stomach. Nowadays, people talk a lot about SIBO, which has an origin in strep, a resistant strain of strep. And what these bacteria do is they take over the good stomach acid, which leaves you with an even lower ability to break down the fats and break down the proteins. And then these bacteria, they are growing inside the lining of the stomach and they give off toxins as well and also producing inflammation. So the baseline guys of all of that is that your body needs support and we're gonna focus on what you can eat that helps both of these issues at the same time. Gonna understand that there's a pyramid. The easiest to be digested are carbohydrates, simple carbohydrates like glucose, then we have complex carbohydrates, then comes protein, and then comes fat. This is the order, and this is also how long they take in the digestive tract. So starches and all kinds of carbohydrates are pretty fast digested, then comes protein, and then comes fat. The more impaired your system is, the less you want to eat proteins and fats. And guys, I know this crazy mania out there with all the paleo diet and we need the protein, you need the protein, you don't die if you don't eat the protein. You know, everything, even an apple, contains protein. Everything contains protein. This Hokkaido contains protein. Everything in nature contains protein. You're not gonna die. And the most interesting thing is that your liver is actually, when it's healthy, able to produce proteins, to synthesize proteins by itself. So don't worry, don't go into the whole protein mania just because everybody tells you so. You're not gonna get healthy. And I'm really, I'm all about you try it out, you make your own experience, and then you make your decision how you wanna progress. This is the best advice I can give you. So hack number one, how to get off the bloating, eat low protein, low fat. And this includes also the five trigger foods that I talk about in other videos a lot. I'm gonna link that I'm gonna link that here. I'm gonna link that here for you as well. There are five trigger foods, just naming them dairy, eggs, gluten, 
soy and corn. What they're triggering is they are feeding bacteria and viruses in your digestive system. You want to help your body to get rid of the toxicity that comes from bacteria and viruses and also other pathogens. With any advice I give you, try it out for a week, then you can reevaluate. So even if you are on the paleo diet, Try to incorporate that, do it for one week, and if it doesn't work, you can still go back to paleo and eating lots of protein and shakes, almond butter, and God knows what. Nothing wrong with that. If you have a good digestive system and everything is well, you are able to break down these foods. But this is the advice for if you wanna reduce bloating and increase your gut health the fastest way possible. Anti-bloating hack number two, what you can actually eat and what your body needs so it can heal your digestive organs and you don't experience the bloating anymore. Now the key thing here to understand is that what your body needs is not fat, is not more protein, it's more nutrients. Nutrients in form of minerals, vitamins, phytonutrients, foods that are naturally high in enzymes that help actually digest themselves. So your digestive system actually can take a break from producing so much bile and producing so much enzyme. We are gonna focus on nutrient dense foods that are naturally low in fat and low in protein. Nature is great, has provided us with everything. So what foods am I talking about? What a wonder, surprise, da da. We're talking about raw vegetables and raw fruits. Now guys, don't panic. I know a lot of you might have SIBO or other gut issues where you say like, oh, I can't do raw foods. I can't do that because I'm, I'm bloating even more. What's really important here to understand is that the reason why you are bloating with these foods might not be that you don't digest them, but they might cause a very strong detox reaction because that's what fruits, for example, naturally do. They are high in antioxidants and they really purge your system and cleanse it. You can start with some gentle foods. For example, cucumbers are incredibly healing. They're incredibly soft and they also contain a high amount of fruit water, which helps your gut to rehydrate. Often because of the way we eat, if we eat high protein, high fat foods and a lot of cooked food, our gut is actually dehydrated, yeah, which makes it even more difficult for our digestion to absorb the nutrients and also to get rid of everything we don't need anymore. Another one that you can eat cooked is sweet potatoes. They are very, very gentle to your body and they are easy digestible. Also normal potatoes are fine to eat. Don't fall in the potatoes are empty carbs. That's not true. They contain minerals and they also help your gut lining to heal. Other than that, leafy greens, as much as you can, raw leafy greens if possible. If not, eat Brussels sprouts, broccoli, cruciferous vegetables, carrots, turnips, things like that. They are dense in minerals. And last but not least, hack number three, how to relieve bloating as quickly as possible and in the most body-friendly way. Celery juice. I can sing a song about celery juice. I feel like I talk about in every video about celery juice and that's just because it works. Celery juice, if you drink it on an empty stomach in the morning, guys, don't freak out if you have SIBO, if you have other gut issues and you feel it's too strong. Just drink a little and then you increase over time. It's very, very cleansing for the body. So often people, if they drink plain celery juice, I recommend 400 milliliters, 16 ounces on an empty stomach first thing in the morning. So no cucumber or water or apple or anything added, just the plain celery juice. A lot of people then come to back to me and say like, oh my God, no, 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 no. My body exploded. I felt so bloated even more or I've got diarrhea, something is really wrong, my body can't digest it. Guys, this means this is the opposite. The opposite is true. This is a detoxing reaction from your body. And I haven't met anybody who did the celery juice over several days and these symptoms did not disappear. So guys, this is the first reaction and that actually tells you that you have a lot of junk in your body, a lot of rottening food that actually gets flushed out through the celery juice. It helps to rebuild your stomach acid, purges your liver, cleanses your liver from toxins. It kills off bacteria like strep. Yeah, if you have SIBO, that's the best remedy you can ever get. It helps with the bile production and it's rich in enzymes, rich in minerals and vitamins. So guys, this is the best thing you can do. I'm also gonna link you a video where I talk more about what celery juice does and why it's so awesome. So check that out to get more information. To summarize, Hack number one, low fat, low protein, avoid the trigger foods, stop feeding bacteria in your body so you don't have so much inflammation and there's no food rottening in your gut. So, and the digestive system gets a break. Second one, we need nutrient dense food. Fruits, vegetables, whatever you can get. Important with fruits, they need to be ripe. 
Yeah, don't eat a green or yellow banana. It needs to be a ripe banana when it's brown and it smells like banana. Third one, celery juice, my secret weapon against any kinds of gut diseases. So SIBO, Candida, whatever you have, IBS, leaky gut syndrome, even things like colitis or Crohn's. This is the, this is the best thing you can do, guys. Bloating, you're going to be so happy with that if you do it over a longer period of time. It's going to build up and, and really rebuild your digestive system. Guys, I hope this was helpful. I hope this was easy and clear enough explained. Now I have two things for you to do. Reach out, share this video, share it with a friend, share it with your partner, or share it in a community where you're active. And after you did this, second, I'd love you to let me know in the comments below which of the things that I mentioned are you willing to put into practice for one week. Let us know, let the gut feeder community know that you are on this. That will increase the possibility for you to sticking with it. And of course, you can also pair up and do it together with a partner. Now, what are you doing? Let me know in the comments below and share this video. Last but not least, if you feel like, oh my God, I don't know what to eat anymore. She just took everything from me that I wanted to eat. And how can I just survive from fruits and vegetables? Let me know. I've created a gut healing challenge, which is one week exactly, where I give you a meal plan. You get a recipe guide, you get a shopping list, you get information for all the healing foods, what they exactly do for your body. There's also more information about the celery juice in there. If that's something that interests you, just click in the description. I've got a preview. So you can do this one week gut healing challenge, even if you are on a paleo diet or on a low footmap diet, whatever you do, you can take a break for one week. Give this a try and see how your symptoms improve so you can really make your own judgments about do you, do you need more protein or am I on the right track? Guys, thank you so much for watching. I wish you a beautiful, unbloated day. And I believe in you. I know you can do this. It's not too late. It's absolutely possible. See you in the next video. Bye-bye.